Is there a sport that exists that embraces cheating more than Major League Baseball? Uh, embrace is pretty tough. Can we think of any other words that fit? Whatever word you want to use, there is one that describes cheating in baseball best. And today, we're going to learn all about it. Major League Baseball's most cheatingest moments are coming up right after this. As my father says, every April, hope springs eternal. And with today's video sponsor, DraftKings, you don't need to rely on hope to win big, even if you're a Mets fan. On DraftKings, there are daily fantasy contests with millions of dollars in prizes up for grabs every week. What you need to do is download the DraftKings app, draft 10 players, use your savvy baseball skills, feel the lineup that doesn't go over the cap at 50K in salary, and then watch as your squad dominates and you win cash. Personally, I'm gonna field Francisco Lindor every week because that's how I roll. So after this video, head on over to DraftKings from the link below and use my code five points to let them know that Baldy sent you. Again, download the DraftKings app from the link below, use my code five points at sign up and make it rain. But only if we're playing at a park with a retractable roof. Before we get started, there are some incidents I covered that are in another video. The incursions I am going to discuss today either weren't in that one or happened recently. Also, cheatingest is totally a word. It's no secret that Albert Pujols suffered a significant career decline after he came to the Angels. His average and home run totals declining after his 14th season. The throw over, Pujols is retarded. That could have been because Mr. Pujols is much older than he actually says he is. This allegation first got legs in 2018 when he said he hit his first dinger at age 13 off Octavio Dotel, and 28 years later, here he is. Well, 13 plus 28 equals 41, and in 2018, Albert Pujols was supposed to be 38. Former MLB exec David Sampson backed this up in 2021, who essentially said, duh, as many other Dominican players have manipulated their ages, most notably Miguel Tejeda. The words giant fraud and Lenny Dykstra are synonymous, both for on and off the field actions. As baseball doesn't exist documented in his video, Dykstra was addicted to steroids and was named in the Mitchell Report in 2007. Dude was injecting Wistraw like he was about to enter the Kentucky Derby. After baseball, he enjoyed a lovely career in defrauding investors, grand theft auto, check kiting, trespassing, multiple lawsuits, indecent exposure, identity theft, drug use, and prison, where he hung out for six and a half months and claimed the guards beat him daily. He is currently alleging Ron Darling fake cancer and still being batshit insane. Um, wanting everyone to know it's been almost two years since Ron Darling fake cancer, which led to um, the biggest fraud in the history of sports. When you oversee one of the most tragically bad franchises for almost a quarter century, wins and losses don't really dictate whether you keep your job or not. Unless you are Kevin Mather, whose mouth is what got him fired. Plenty of execs have said dumb things, but Mather makes the cheatingest list for openly talking about manipulating service time, complaining about foreign players' English speaking abilities. His English is not tremendous. And the cost of their interpreters. I'm tired of paying his interpreter. Because when he was a player, you know, we pay Iwakuma X, but we also had to pay $75,000 a year to have an interpreter with him. Um, his English suddenly got better. All of this recorded on a video call with his Rotary Club. Mather apologized, then resigned. This list is usually reserved for cheating that affects the outcome of games. So Tony La Russa getting a DUI doesn't affect whether the White Sox underperform or not this year. But what's really interesting is the stubborn decision not to really do anything about it by the White Sox. La Russa was nabbed for a Dewey one day before he was hired by the team on February 24th, 2020. And then the story didn't surface until about nine months later. So either Tony didn't say anything or the Sox knew and covered it up. Either way, La Russa didn't get fired and he said he doesn't have a drinking problem. This was his second DUI. Speaking of guys who committed questionable actions and still kept their jobs, there's also the story of Mickey Calloway, who earned a reputation for sending out lots of pictures of his eggplant emoji. 
Apparently this all happened when he was with the Indians and his lawyer contends these allegations stem from a bitter husband whom with Calloway was having an affair with his wife, which somehow makes it less bad. Meanwhile, Calloway is suspended as the Angels pitching coach until the investigation is complete and none of this is as disastrous as his tenure as the Mets manager. And to round out this section of off-field stuff, here is the plight of Jared Porter, the former Mets GM that is so goddamn clueless in life, it's amazing he is able to put on his pants correctly. After meeting a female reporter in 2016 and exchanging phone numbers under the impression they would be talking about baseball, Porter would send her 60 unsolicited and unreplied messages, culminating in his final message, yes, the eggplant emoji. This incident came with hard proof and Jared, who was with the Cubs at the time and then had made it all the way to the Mets GM by 2020, was fired immediately. Lol Mets reign supreme. Hopefully this is the last of the Mets being on this list. I have a feeling it's not. Remember those words I used earlier? One of them was tolerance. In the late 2010s, Trevor Bauer started hurling very public accusations of others using foreign substances on the baseball to increase spin rate. And when the MLB did nothing, he started doing it himself. He even went to great lengths to show everyone that he was cheating and still nothing. Then he dragged his nemesis Garrett Cole into it who has drastically increased spin rate over the years. Finally, the MLB decided to do something about it when they banned Angels Clubhouse attendant Bubba Harkins, allegedly the mastermind behind a magical substance called Go Juice. He would be the only person punished, and that was a damn mistake, as he is suing the MLB and has outed nearly everyone involved in the cheating, including Justin Verlander, Corey Kluber, and a slew of others, alleging the MLB has hired freaking chemists to develop the stickiest of the icky for increased spin rate. So the same guys that developed Astroglide are also helping big leaguers get $30 million AAV contracts. Bubba's lawsuit is still pending and I'm happy I worked Astro Glide into one of my videos. Quick, after Jose Canseco, who else do you immediately associate with steroids? That's right, A-Rod. The reason his name popped up in your head is because he served as the scapegoat for a massive cheating scandal in 2014 out of a clinic called Biogenesis that was basically injecting any Major League Baseball player with steroids so potent, if one drop fell on the floor, it would grow into an entire human being capable of slashing 280, 35, and 100. Well, it turns out A-Rod wasn't the only one involved as Nelson Cruz, Ryan Braun, Johnny Peralta, some guy named Jordan Alberto, and nine other guys were suspended. Suspended. But A-Rod, because he dare impede used car salesman Bud Selig, caught the worst of it and the longest suspension in MLB history. I'm sure we all feel sorry for him. I thought I was done talking about the Mets. Let's dive into the tale of Fred Koopa, I mean Wilpon, former Mets owner who had a buddy named Bernie Madoff. You see, Bernie ran a Ponzi scheme in the early 2000s that screwed a lot of people out of a lot of money and Fred claimed that he had been built too. That's likely untrue. Fred said he lost $700 million, but reports countered that and claimed he actually made $300 million. This naturally pissed a lot of people off, especially those who lost money. So he got sued and reports came out that Madoff money was used directly in Met activities and over time, the Wilpons did indeed keep bleeding money and fielding uncompetitive teams, except for an anomaly in 2015. And eventually he sold to hedge fund billionaire Stephen Cohen, and that started off so well. Okay, we're down to the nitty gritty. The 2017 scandal that made John Boy Media famous has now made it onto the cheatingest list as on my first vid, the story broke like three days after I uploaded, damn the luck. We know how it went. Camera in center field, relay into the dugout, and a rather crude detectable system of alerting the batter banging of trash cans, AKA dating a Kardashian. Yes, the scandal generated a ton of hate towards the Strohs, but there was a very similar one that somehow gets much less, though equally deserved derision. The very next year, the Red Sox hired Astros coach Alex Cora, and he brought with them a winning way. By winning, I mean cheating. Cora, one of the architects of the Astros system, tweaked the scheme the Sox had been caught using in 2017, which employed the use of Apple Watches to relay signs. But since the MLB knew about it and basically did nothing, he was like, it, 
let's keep doing it. So the Red Sox along with the Astros added the video replay room as the intercept system in 2018 and in 2020 when the Strohs got caught, everybody snitched like 6ix9ine and all the ugly sign stealing warts were uncovered in exchange for zero punishment. The Sox won the World Series in 2018 and they get much less ire from fans over that than the Astros even though they also beat the Dodgers too. It's been alleged lots of other teams also stole signs in the same manner. But the players do these kind of things for a lot of reasons and that reason is our number one for this list. When you look at the longest lasting business practices of all time, they always involve screwing. And in the case of the MLB, the owners have been trying to screw the players since the start. What is collusion? Well, it's when a group of owners get together and though they are competitors on the field, agree that they will not screw each other over by driving up player salaries and actively share data and communications in order to ensure that they all enjoy fatter profit margins. For years, collusion was thought of as a gentleman's agreement, like in 1919 when the owners released every player without a contract. Under the agreement, none of them would sign each other's players, forcing them to come crawling back for less. Since 1985, there have been three confirmed incidents of owner collusion. One, when free agents like Kirk Gibson didn't get any offers. Another in 1986, when many players were forced back to their teams like Andre Dawson and Jack Morris. And in 1988, when it was found that the owners were sharing information with each other about which offers they were making to players. Sneaky, sneaky, the owners got caught, were sued, and settled. Though after that, player salaries have ballooned to the size of Mike Tomlin's eyeballs, there have been further allegations of collusion since. Like in 2008, when the MLBPA alleged the owners colluded against giving another contract to Barry Bonds. However, it was determined that he's just a giant cheating asshole. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to subscribe for all kinds of videos on all kinds of sports, not just baseball. I'm Five Points Vids and you made it to my next video.